Yes. Manchu, Manchu. Manchu, Good Manchu. morning. Good morning. Mm. Good morning to Vision Temple of Praise this morning. We had a lovely couple of days of the weather, so I hope you're looking forward to the sunshine that we're going to be getting, that God's going to bless us with this, this year. I know the farmers are being worried about the crop, but you know, <laughs> only God knows what weather we're going to have. Amen. Amen. Okay, so welcome in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. We're going to um, just ask God to guide us this morning. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to be in this house this morning. We pray that we leave all our burdens at the foot of the cross this morning. And we just Spirit and truth this morning. Give him, give him our all this morning because he's worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're going to start by saying welcome, welcome. Just welcome. I will open up his eyes. 
men this morning. Let's stand and sing together. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Let's put that sweet anointing in here today. No matter what you're going through, just keep going. Amen. There is a Thank you. 
and we do believe seats are going fast for that. Our convention takes place uh, on Sunday, the 24th of July. And it's here at Panagraf Village with uh, the services at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. We'll be having convention dinner also, so you can remain here all day if you so wish. Uh, the, the morning service will commence as normal as 11 and again 5 p.m. The ordination of uh, myself, Deacon Keith, and Pastor Ivan will also be taking place in the morning service, says on here, but I do believe that could change. I think it's the evening, isn't it, Bishop? It's in the evening. The ordination service will take place uh, uh, in the evening service from 5 p.m. Uh, next Sunday, the 8th of May, the speaker will be Pastor Sheena. Amen? Amen. God is good. The worship team can come back. Um, and following the worship team, we'll have a scripture reading by Minister Jennifer. Rain. Rain on me Rain 
Do we have faith? 
speak like that. That's what you call blind faith. God will come. Blind faith. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Bear in the word of God. Amen. This time we're going to collect our offering and see the course at the same time as we pray your offerings.
Father, and thank you, God. And thank you, God, that we can be in the house of God one more time to praise you and extol the name of God. As the songwriter says, where shall I run, Lord? Where shall I run? There are so many places we can run, God, but there is only one place that we can go right now, and it's at the foot of Jesus, where we can pray, God, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave us that hope, and you died on Calvary's cross for our sins, Lord, so we can run to you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And because you did that, God, we are here, and we're standing in your presence. And we're standing on the promises of God. Oh, hallelujah. Right now I place the offering before you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that you bless and sanctify everybody that put forward right now in the name of Jesus. And those who did not give, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will bless them bountifully right now in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way, God, in this place, God. Fill us with your love this morning. Fill us with your peace, Lord. Fill us with your absolutely amazing glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, God, and we place you on high. Have thine own way in this service as we pray, as we say thanks in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
It contains information that the media may feel uncomfortable putting online. Mm -hmm. And because I gave them a copy of it. Mm. But what I did was I read it and put it on my YouTube channel. And people have listened to it. Then I get a message. How can a man of religion and a so-called leader be delivering messages of a racist nature? And it is clear to me, I'm only paraphrasing, it's there, go to my YouTube channel, you'll see it. The comment. And they say, you're racist, you don't like white people. But we are all equal. Amen. But, you see, the point is, you deliver the message without fear. Because that is what was said. You then take what was said, you put it there to, come to, to make that record. But then, you have to do it without fear. Because you will be attacked. Mm -hmm. And that's the society in which we live. And Barnabas, to see Bart Bartimaeus rather, to seek his healing was attacked. Wasn't he? Wasn't he attacked? Because by virtue of blocking his pathway, you are doing what? You are attacking him. Instead of clearing the way so a man can see the salvation that he wants to see healing because he has faith to say, I know if I encounter the Lord, Raboni calls him, Rabbi, if I see Raboni, Raboni is here, if I seek him, I have enough faith that I will be healed. And you stop them from seeking their salvation, you are attacking them. And one thing we must realize is when we want to deliver the message, we will be attacked. Yes. People seem to block us. When God gives you a task to do, many will want to block you. But why do they block you? Why do they seek to block you? Because you know why? Sometimes, you know when God bless you, you know, you know you get a fresh start, you know. Your blessings come up more. Amen. Amen. You must understand that. Because God is there to uphold those who feel as though they've fallen. He's there to help those who feel that they are failing. Amen. Right? He's there for those who are weak. But God also gives those. You know, sometimes you're ready to quit, you know. Right? You imagine, have you ever thought, you know, children, when they get up, they take two steps, they drop, take two steps, and they drop. But do they ever give up? They keep going until one day they get up and they walk fully. Yes. 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 Aren't we learning from the lessons of our own childhood? Amen. Because that's life. Yes. We are being trained from the day we are born for the battle that is ahead in each and every one of us in life. And that's the thing. So what happened here with Barnabas was that he was there. Amen. Lord. Jesus, Lord, Rabboni. Mm. And what they say? Wait, man. Mm. Man, sit down there and beg, man. He, he ain't got no time for you. Who do you, who do you think you are? Mm. You're not some blind beggar. Yes. Hey. Isn't that what they say? Think about it. Think about what we see out there today. Yeah. Wait, man. Wait, who you think you is? Mm. Who you think you is? Mm. But Jesus heard him and said, let him through. That's the thing. Jesus said, let him through. And once he got through, Jesus said, go. Your faith will now see you through. And the faith that he had, he was healed. Minister Jennifer talked about the call to service. My note of the day today that I send out each day said, you can be freed when you are prepared to break away from the chains. Yes. Yes. Amen. You are holding yourself back. Amen. People, some of us behave like we're still on the plantation. I make no apologies for saying this. 
Some of us fear that we're still on the plantation. Some of us have, you have what they call the Negroes in the house. You have the Negroes on the plantation. And I liken myself personally to the Negro that can't stop escaping. As soon as I try to bring you back, you run further away and you run further from them. But then you keep coming back to try and help your people. But when you come back to help them and try to capture you, so you've got to escape again. Because we become so entrenched in whatever the norm is. We become so entrenched in the status quo. We have no time. We procrastinate so much. Why? If I escape or try to escape or try to him, I'm going to get so many. And I don't want to leave. So I'll stay here. I bear the oppression. Yes. But it is not a matter of criticizing. It is a matter of educating. Yes. It's a matter of demonstrating. Yes. Demonstrating the love of God and the strength of the Holy Spirit that can see us through. And part of us only could do is say, Lord, I call out to you today. Praise the Lord. Remember in those days to be by neglect and you know you can't work. You can't go anywhere by yourself. Right? You take all the everything that is there is taken for granted. Right? Well, what about what, what you just all that his families and friends do was just here. That's your place. That's you. Mm -hmm. Ben. That's you. Yeah. Living a miserable life. So when Jesus walked by, he saw the opportunity the Lord. for advancement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deliver the message so you can move on. Amen. He saw the opportunity there to see healing. And that's why I said, George, son, sorry, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Amen. God puts us in places where we can meet him, doesn't yes. he? Yes. Doesn't he? Yes. If you go to work, you can meet. Yeah. 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 Have you got to ask that? Yeah. Or Aldi? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you walk out into hospital street there, don't you think you can meet God there? Because he's everywhere. Yeah. Barnabas wasn't in the tabernacle. Barnabas, I keep saying Barnabas. Barnabas was not in the tabernacle. Was he? No. no. It wasn't in the church hall, was he? No. no. It wasn't in the pub. Sit on the street side where they left him. Yeah. They dumped him there. Mm. What, a, what, what a worse place can it be? But the presence of the Lord was there mm. upon him. Mm. And by that demonstration of faith, mm. he was healed so that he could move on. Amen. Amen. Even in today's society, Blind people, sometimes they can't work. Mm. Some have other talents. We can talk about people like Stevie Wonder, mm. Ray Charles, and there's several others Amen. where God has blessed them and graced them. Amen. But do you know who holds people back? It's not God. It's people. It's us. It was us people that were stopping part of us from getting his healing. Are we learning? We have to stand firm on the promises that God has given to each and every one of us. And when we have found, when the opportunity, open the door. Amen. It could be just one chance. Amen. One chance, because remember, you know, your journey with the Lord is not just your journey goes, how are you going to get from here to there? You have to step. You have to walk. You have to move. Right. I can't do this. So if I don't take the next step, where's the next step going to come? Amen. So who's holding your back, folks? Who is holding your back? Who is stopping you from seeking your salvation? When opportunity is knocking, who is stopping you from taking up that opportunity? But I'll tell you one person, it ain't me. Because you have to make your own personal decision 
on your wall. Every single day of our lives, there are fresh opportunities. Even if it is to watch the latest episode of EastEnders. But I don't show the same thing what they do now. Yes, I can't say they don't show the same episode. But every day, there is a different episode. Amen. I expect. And the thing is, we have opportunities where we might be able to right the wrongs of yesterday. Isn't that wonderful? You know, opportunities where we can become a better husband or wife, an opportunity where we can help our neighbors, or even an opportunity where we can make a brand new start. You know, but so many times of us, times don't we take advantage of that because we're saying, well, we can't be bothered anymore. We procrastinate so much. Have you ever seen that you put so much energy into procrastination, which means delaying? You put more energy into procrastination than you do in getting up with it. Arch your five more minutes. And then when five minutes got short, just another ten minutes. And then after that, oh, look at this. Simon Templar on TV. So oh, that's another hour done. And when the hour comes, the all them have a John Wayne movie on. So by the time you're done, you've missed your opportunity. The bus is gone. Hasn't it? Whose fault is it, folks? Whose fault is it? Remember, there are some people already holding you back. But it was the determination of part of us to seek the Lord's attention as he passed him by. And there are several other references of a similar nature in the Bible where Jesus is journeying. And it's the determination of the individual to take up the opportunity why they are able to move forward with their lives. Where are you today? One thing, the point I'm making is this, you know the hesitation, yes. the procrastination doesn't make our lives easier. The, 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 the element of so-called mystical fear that we have, fear of being laughed at, fear of people saying, who does he think he is? Fear of when people say, you are not a man of God, you are a racist. Don't let that stand in your way of doing what God has given you to do. The Bible tells us that it warns us about presuming upon tomorrow. Because none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. That's the whole point of opportunity. Grab the opportunity when it is there. Because when you get to the pillar of the gates and God said, listen, you're going to say, let me in. And God's going to say, listen. Your passage was guaranteed, but you turned it back on me. Because when the opportunity came, instead of you grabbing that opportunity, you decided to hesitate. Amen. Let me ask you this, folks, yeah? If you see a bus coming, and when the bus comes, what do you do? You've been standing on the bus stop for half an hour, what do you do? You don't get on the bus? Right. Well, because the driver didn't drop it down the full six inches and drop it down five. You're going to say, I, I'm not going to try and get an attack. I'll make that step. I'm not going to do it. So what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. You either step up or say, driver, drop in the extra inch, please. But instead of that, you just stand there. I'm not going on here. The driver said, you're getting on or not? How many people have been to ask by bus driver? You're getting on or not? Yes. And next thing, door close bus down. Where you there? The same place. Because you, do you see that in the hesitation? Right? Think about it. Then, when the opportunity came to get the bus at 12.30, you have to wait till 1 o'clock. Yes. But then the 1 o'clock bus don't come till half an hour later because they've died their diversions and it got held up in Perry Bar. The point I'm making is why you must not procrastinate. He was determined! And that's the determination we must have. When we want something, we have to be determined. Yes. When the Windows generation came here, when my wife sitting there lived in Aston, well, she was born when they lived in Aston, and when she was 
christened that St. James Church, which was in Aston, but it was the very old building. And here's the thing. When they moved to City Road Edgemaster, mm -hmm. and a church 300 yards up on City Road, on the corner of Portland Road and City Road, mm -hmm. St. Germain's, I don't mind calling a church name. Of course. When she, when her mom got ready in the morning, and I can't remember if it was four or five of you at the time, because there's a whole bit of But I think it was four or five of them at the time. She got them ready, you know, them days, you know, you ladies know, or of that age, you know, you make sure the hair is greased properly and it's plaited up nicely, everybody. So off you go, walk the 300, 400 yards up to church. When you get there, you know, Mika says, oh, you all dress nicely and everything. But the congregation don't like your presence, so don't come back next week. I like to remember those experiences that as a child. And that was in the 60s. But here's the thing. Her mother's from Barbados, and in Barbados, the main church is the Anglican church. She didn't give up. She said, if you stand in my way, no, sir. She walked up by another church. Praise and the Lord. other church, which is Anglican, accepting them. Without question. Amen. They then remained there until she passed away. Mm -hmm. So she was there for a long, nearly 50 years. Mm -hmm. At that church. Mm -hmm. The point that I am making is she was not prepared for anybody to stop her from worshiping her God. Amen. Just like Bartimaeus was not gonna let anybody stand in his way of the one opportunity that he had. You know, one of the things, you know, we're taught Psalms 90, verse 12 reminds us, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We're not here forever. So we must grab every single opportunity to take the next step and make the next step. Because if we don't take it, where, what's going to happen to us? Do you think God just wants us to come to church every Sunday, sing hallelujah, praise the Lord, and then, you know, throw a pound in the offering plate, and then off we go home till next Sunday? Is that our journey? No. Is that your journey? God gives, we are here for a reason. And God gives us purpose. And we must live up to that purpose and step up to that purpose. Not every single one of us can do the same thing. Not every one of us. Because one of the things is as well, we have to face our fears. But to face our fears, we must take up the opportunity. Because to face our fears, what do we need? We need strength of faith in the Lord. We need to have the Holy Spirit presence with us. And that's the thing. So, you know, what, what Bartimaeus did, he knows that people are going to look at him and say, when you are going. Because remember, his family just dumped him on the roadside and said, beg. Mm -hmm. Bartimaeus can't even see how much money he got. Right? He couldn't see, he was blind. Mm -hmm. So really, if you look in depth now, what was happening to the money? Think about it. Mm -hmm. But he had to face the fear of ridicule, which they ridiculed him. They blocked his pathway. But he was determined to take that opportunity, and he had to face the fear of being ridiculed. And by what did he then do? He just called out, Amen. and his prayers were answered. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. Not to be paralyzed by fear. Amen. What a wonderful thing to break away from the change of fear Amen. to meet your full potential. Amen. Eh? I don't want to be this assignment because I don't understand it. So what do you do? Do you try or do you succumb to the fear that you know you might get an F? I remember at school, um, I was told in chemistry because I wanted to be a doctor, a medical doctor. And I was told in chemistry, which was one of the subjects I needed at what it used to call O level. I was told that I would be getting an F. An F don't mean fantastic. Yeah. F mean fear. 
My mother looked at the teacher and said to her, to him, are you talking about the same days, man? Are you not talking about him? F, feel? Him can't feel. Can you not going to make him feel and there's no feeling going on? You must have feel him and you are trying to feel him. Amen. That's what she said to God. I'm going to just start feeling. She said, are you going to try feeling? We will see. You get that mean? Amen. You got to be. Amen. Because one thing I learned from my mother's wisdom. Did you hear it now? Did you see the wisdom now coming in? From, the, from, the, from, the, from your parents? Wisdom saying, you are not feel. You will not feel. In the name of as well, the belt didn't help us. I mean, I didn't <laughs> 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 However, <laughs> Bartimus knew that no matter what, he wanted to get his blessing. Amen. And no matter what obstacles was in his way, he wasn't going to let Jesus pass by no. without reaching out. Amen. Amen. And what, what, you know, when you compare your life experiences, you give God thanks. Because overcoming the fear, overcoming the ridicule, saying, I will do that assignment. And if I get an F, I will have to do it again. Because if you imagine you're doing your degree, if your assignment is low, you get the opportunity to resubmit. Try again. If I prosper, if I fail, I'm going to rise and try again. How many of us are prepared to rise and keep trying? Or do we fall at the first hurdle? The Commonwealth Games are coming to Birmingham. And those who will be watching it, you know the hurdles. 100, 100, what is it? 110 meter hurdles or 40 meter. How much people you see, Lord? And then drop over the first one. They get up and they still keep going. Keep going. And although they come last, yeah. They keep going just to complete it. Yes. To have the satisfaction. Yes. I fell, but I got up. I dusted myself up. Yes. And I finished it. Yes. Can we see the biblical principles that play in our daily lives? Can we see that God is in our lives? But we sometimes don't acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit that keeps us going. Yes. And we must do that. But you know something as well, you know, you know, when we don't face our fears, you know, it makes us selfish, we cocoon ourselves. And then we even have fear that we have that, we don't even want to commit to God. Because you know what it does, it makes us short-sighted. It makes us not look beyond the bridge of our nose. It doesn't make us open our eyes to the rest of the world. We're just stuck in tunnel vision. We're not seeing what's going on over there, over there. Because the opportunity is not necessarily in front of me. The opportunity could be that way. Which road do you know that you can drive on that is straight as an arrow? There's only one road, you know, and they call it the runway at an airport. Because that is straight, so I'm them um, speed up and take off. But then, does the plane fly straight? No, it doesn't. Because sometimes, as soon as they take off, they make a turn. So I'm going to make quick, are you in turn? Well, the point that I'm making is. We must open our eyes and see what is around us. Amen. Right? Bartimaeus went through too many what ifs. But he faced his fear because he was desperate. He was desperate for advancement. And by calling out to Jesus, by calling out to Jesus, what happens? He got what he desired because Jesus told him your faith will see you through. Yeah. How many of us you believe today that your faith will see you through? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Faith is God asking us to do something greater than what we've ever done before. Yes. Well, you know, as a baby, mm. you know, your mom brings you around in the hand no matter how heavy you is, I know about it because I was told I was a heavy baby. And you know, they bring you around in their hand, they put you down, you get to, and then one day, one day, right, by faith, they say, you won't walk. And the faith that God instilled into them and the wisdom, and then they look at you, and you don't ever try to. We got mothers here, I'm sure that when Minister Jennifer got up on, got up on take on, because they said, oh, take another, take another, didn't you? They said, take another, go on, just take another, go on, no problem. You know, you're getting 
you're excited, aren't you? But that energy of excitement is transcending into the child. Amen? Praise the Lord. But what we do when we get older, watch out, we can keep your money, we have nice spoken word, but we don't have to go for it. Make it come. You're all right. Instead of encouraging him, instead of opening doors for him, instead of saying, my brother, come. Amen. Instead of that, like Bart was, where do you think he might? Because he's going to be better than me. Can you see that now we hold people back? Because we think they're going to be better than us. If I am where God wants me to be, it's because I am in a position where I can do my best for the Lord. So when God puts the next person there, that's where the body of Christ can operate at its best. Because the body of Christ must operate at its full potential. Just imagine then without Barticus's the opportunity that was given unto him. Just imagine if he wasn't prepared to face his fear, his nemesis. Just imagine we would not be talking about him, would we? Nobody would even know who he was. But because he stood up, he said, Rabbi, I want to see you. What did he mean by that? Did he mean, Rabbi, I want to see you, meaning, come and talk to me? Or did he mean, Rabbi, I want to see you? But his wish was granted. But the thing about it was, Jesus asked him what he wanted. Yes. Jesus asked him, what did you want? Because Jesus wanted to know, did this man want something? whereby it would benefit others. Amen. And by him we gave being given his sight. Amen. He was able to build, play his role in building the legacy of Amen. our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. In essence, what Martinus was saying is, I believe you are the Son of God and I believe you have the power to heal and change me. Heal and change me. Amen. And that's the important hey. thing. How many of you today believe that Jesus cannot just heal you but he can change you? Amen. Yes. We have to remember one thing. Not all of us, not every single one of us are going to be healed. Not every single one of us are going to live until we're a hundred. But each and every one of us will walk with the Lord and our life will change. Amen. And I think, you know, Minister Jennifer said something, but in James 4.15 we're reminded, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this that. Intentional words, not if we will. Positive words. I don't like this song, but it was a song they sung in the civil rights movement in America. Because I always see it as being so repressive. But it is an important song. We shall overcome. But it's not because I it's because it is so repressive. It is so oppressive. It, 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 it hurts my heart to sing that song because we are supposed to be in a society that we are equal, equal in the sight of God and we are all God's children. And because of the will of man, they seek to hold us back. Amen. And there are times when we take the hits, we take the hits, and we take so many hits. Sometimes you want to rise up and you can't because they chain you down and they hold you down. Amen. Then we say we shall overcome. Uh, and then all your friends abandon you. Those that you think are with you aren't with you. Because life is all 
and tried to stop him from getting to Jesus. It was all right, didn't it? Well, they thought they were all right. But who got the blessing? Who got the blessing? That's the thing. Who gets the blessing? Because you know what Jesus said to Bartimaeus? Go your way. Your faith, your faith, your belief, your trust has healed you. And immediately, he received his sight and he accepted the Lord God as his Savior because he received God's grace in healing. How many of us today want to receive God's grace? How many of us want the healing? We're just carrying around so much pain, so much conflict in our hearts. We're not even trying to purge it. Remember, the Lord's supposed to be healed. He had to purge. That's why Jesus asked him, what do you desire? You have to know what you want. Lord, Lord, give me a blessing. You know, Lord, give me a blessing. A blessing for what? A blessing to go around, man. A blessing so you can open the kettle What blessing do you want from the Lord? You must have an idea of what you want the Lord to do for you. Although Bartimaeus was blind, he, he could realize and wake up to the realization that Jesus was the only person that could help. But today, how many of us, although we have sight, we are spiritually blinded? You may have the nice car, the nice house. You may wear, in the men's case, the 2,000 pound suit. Or the ladies, you know, the latest Louis Vuitton bag or something like that. But are your eyes really open to the Lord? Are you seeking God's face? Yes. Or are you seeking man's praise? Oh. Where are you today? How are you going to move forward by faith? Are you going to move forward by seizing the opportunity? By facing your nemesis? By standing firm in the Lord? Or do you believe you can move forward by sitting there and doing nothing? Are you prepared to stay in the rut that you're in? You know something, there's a big difference between a grave and a rotting. It's a big difference. A rot is very tiny. But what can you do? Some people turn that rot into a grave. Just because it won't stop doesn't mean. I remember when I was a child on our farm in Jamaica, and I remember when the land rover got stuck. Right? What did we have to do? Do we just let it carry on? We have to go and get stone and put this stone near our get down of coconut, those coconut boughs, you know, put on the wheel so it got some traction so that it could come out of the rock. But when we life's rocks come amongst us, we don't want to do nothing. Faith is not only about believing. Faith is about acting upon them. What does it profit if a man if someone says he has faith but has no works? Can faith alone save him? Faith without works is dead. People today, let us stand together. Let's stand firm in the Lord. Let us learn from this story of Bartimaeus. Mm. There's more to it than the fact that Jesus healed him. Yes. There's some underlying principles that we need to adopt in our life. Yes. And when we adopt those in our lives, we know that God will bless each and every one of us. And also as well, remember, when the blessing of the Lord is upon us, we get a fresh start. Yeah. And that fresh start, let us share that fresh start. Let us be of good courage because Jesus is passing by. Step out in faith, believing that trusting in God, no matter how short that opportunity, that window of opportunity may be, mm -hmm. it can be life changing. Amen. So today, stand firm. But stand firm on truth, stand firm on justice, and God will bless you. The Lord bless you this morning. Amen.
going to sing this refrain for the worship team to come. Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way to the Lord. Jesus is passing this way.
Pastor Sheena was prayed for. And last week in church, Pastor Sheena was not well. And I'm sure you will forgive me for sharing this. But she did suffer a mishap. And she had a very minor stroke. However, that's all I'm going to say. Look at her. However, it didn't have the impact they expected. Because they said there was a blocking stopping it from having the impact they expected. Let's be done for now. And you know what the doctors told her? It will correct itself. Only God. Amen. My sister, be encouraged. Yes. God has plenty of work for you to do. How do we get over? Shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord. 
Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace yes. now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday in the Lord. The sun is still shining. Yes. Greet one another and God bless you all. Amen. We've come this far, baby. Leave.